All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our case study webinar, How E-Delivery Helped Reduce Cycle Times, Increase Placement Ratio, Eliminate Costs, and More. My name is Jared Bruley, and I'm the Director of Customer Marketing here at iPipeline, and I'm going to serve as your webinar host today. Now, at iPipeline, we're focused on helping you secure more financial futures through our innovative and comprehensive suite of end-to-end -end solutions, and we're really glad you could join us today. In today's session, we are going to dive into why adopting e-delivery is crucial for success, and we're going to hear some great insights and perspectives from folks who have already adopted e-delivery, and we're going to uh, navigate and hear some of their success stories, lessons learned, and best practices. Now, in an effort to minimize distractions and background noise, we have muted all participants uh, and disabled your camera functions. Also, this webinar is being recorded, and each of you will receive an email with instructions on how to view and access the recording within the next few days, so keep an eye out on that. And we will also post the recording on ipipeline.com. Now, we hope that you have lots of questions, and we encourage lots of, lots of dialogue in, in, in uh, chat throughout today's session. So if you do have a question, uh, we invite you to use our chat feature within the platform, and you can send your question to the host and panelists. We will have time at the end of the session to answer any questions that come in during the presentation, and we're expecting the presentation to be about 30 to 35 minutes, including the Q&A. Um, now, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today's session. First up, we have Dennis Latour. Uh, Dennis is a friend and colleague of mine, and he's a seasoned professional with over 26 years of experience here at iPipeline. Throughout his career, he's held a variety of roles and now serves as the product manager for e-delivery and underwriting. Uh, he's based in Utah, uh, just south of Salt Lake City, and enjoys spending his summers exploring the state's scenic lakes, camping, and paddleboarding in the Utah mountains. Next up, we have Leah Mahoney, who is the Executive Vice President of Operations at Diversified Brokerage Services. Fun fact about Leah, I just found out uh, the, over the last few minutes, is uh, Leah and I grew up in the same town and went to the same high school uh, here in Wisconsin, so small world. Uh, Leah brings 25 years of experience building relationships with clients, advisors, and industry leadership. And throughout her career, she has provided strategic leadership setting divisional plans, accelerating key objectives, and maximizing resources to achieve sales and service goals. And in 2022, she received the Naoba ID20 Award, uh, which honors the industry's innovators and trailblazers who exhibit strong passion for and commitment uh, to independent distribution. Uh, Leah is a neighbor or, of mine. Uh, in uh, I'm in Wisconsin. She's in Minnesota, and she lives there with her husband and two children. And finally, to round out today's speakers, we have Sally Taddy. Uh, Sally is the director of Easy Life of Highland Capital Brokerage. And in Sally's current role, she supports internal teams, advisors, and agents of distribution partners on all aspects of Highland's Easy Life platform. Sally's been in the insurance industry since 1988, and in those 30 plus years, she has performed many roles, ranging from case management, new business a supervisor, sales support, marketing, and vice president of operations. Uh, Sally provides a unique perspective on the potential challenges that come with writing, processing, and delivering insurance, and loves to problem solve and help see things through to completion. Also, I wanna uh, take a, a moment to really uh, call out Sally. Um, we did have a last minute cancellation for uh, another one of our, our guests that was gonna be joining us. And Sally came to the table and uh, is more than happy and able to share her perspectives with everyone today. So Sally, thank you for uh, working with us on our last minute change. And we're very happy to have you and Leah join us. So with that, Dennis, I'm gonna toss it over to you to officially get us started. All right. Thanks, Jared. Uh, just really quick, I want to take a minute just to kind of give a quick overview on iPipeline for those of you that may not uh, know too much about us. Uh, iPipeline was founded in 1995. Um, we have offices uh, in the United States, Canada, and the UK. Uh, we support over 100 uh, different insurance carriers, 2,500 uh, broker dealers, and over 500,000 uh, agents uh, and advisors. I pipeline really uh, prides ourselves in uh, making a difference in the, in the market. Uh, we do consider ourselves a market leader with our platform and all the solutions that um, provide a seamless, uh, integrated, um, you know, straight through process with uh, insurance policies. Uh, we also have, you know, as I mentioned, our expanded uh, network of 
carriers and distributors and agents. Uh, we do pride ourselves on our tech and and the security that becomes, um, you know, with those things that you guys can feel safe, um, that your data is fully protected with us. Uh, and we bring together best practices over 29, uh, 29 years of experience, um, you know, in the industry. Um, and just, you know, that, the, and, you know, if you add up all of our employees that have the experience, obviously we're uh, a lot higher there. So, uh, you know, just bringing that best practice mentality uh, to the market. Um, so that's just a little bit about iPipeline. Uh, I, I do want to give an opportunity for uh, Leah and Sally to give a give us a, a little brief overview about their agencies. So, uh, Leah, I'll kick it over to you uh, real quick on tell us a little about DBS. Absolutely. Thank you. And I'm just excited to be here on this call with you and my upper Midwest friends of Jared and Sally. That's an exciting bonus. So Diversified Brokerage Service it, um, is based out of Minneapolis and is a company with 50 plus years of experience. It was founded by an individual and his children have been leading our organization for almost 30 years as our chief executive officer and chief operations officer. The company is focused on providing excellent service in the area of life insurance, partnering with advisors across the country. However, we do also support linked benefit products, and we recently started an annuity division as well to just keep expanding the offerings that we have for our partners. We lead with an e platform first approach on everything. We want to be as digital and as simple to do business with as possible. And our mantra is making business easier for the advisors and partners we work with. All right, thanks, Leah. Sally, how about you? Tell us about a little bit about Highland. Hi, and thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm excited to be here. And again, it's so, it's so fun to find out where other, where other people live. And Jared and Leah, we're all from the Midwest, so it's kind of fun. So Highland's mission is uh, to provide a professional services that is tailored uh, to risk management and solutions to our financial advisors. So we do have 300 nationwide employees um, and so and we're still growing. So we, we also have the point of sale um, and along with the innovative and holistic, as you know, just like Leah, we are we are trying to get everybody going e first. Um, so because that is the way of our future. And then we do um, uh, focus on life insurance, annuity, long-term care, and disability solutions. So thank you. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you both for being here today. And I, I do want to recognize uh, in our audience, we, we have both other agencies as well as carriers joining us today. So thank you guys for joining us. Uh, you know, from an agency perspective, it's good to hear what your peers uh, are doing. So, um, you know, hearing from Leah and Sally will be a tremendous um, benefit from you, but also from a carrier's perspective is to really listen to what your agencies are talking about and what they, um, you know, what they're experiencing and whatnot when it comes to, to e-delivery. So again, appreciate the carrier um, audience that have joined us today too. We'll go ahead and kick it off and we'll start talking about uh, some of the things on e-delivery. So I'm going to um, put this question out to you both. Uh, Lee, I'll have you uh, kick us off with this, but just thinking back to your previous um, you know, uh, approval process with with e-delivery or with, I'm sorry, with document delivery, um, uh, especially when it ta we're talking about paper, you know, what are some of the main challenges you and the other agencies had to deal with um, in relation to that? Um, no problem. And I'll try not to steal it because I know Sally and I are going to have similar, similar <laughs> challenges. So I'll try to like ca cap it at half of it, but I'll say time. The amount of time it took and it still takes using regular, um, the regular postal service to just mail policies back and forth to get wet signatures, to wait for it to get to an advisor's office, the advisor to meet with a client, to get the physical signatures on that paper and then send it back was just incredible. And we all know in this business, time is of the essence because once you get that approval and make it to the point where the sale is about to come to fruition, like you, you've you already gone through potentially months of underwriting and requirements and, and complexity there. And it's really time to just get this finalized. And those delays were, were can be extreme and are unnecessary. So that was a big one, not to mention the risk of losing things in the mail. 
uh, that it happens. It, it still happens to this day. And again, when you're at that point of finally like, we're going to put this policy in force, get all the information signed off on and move ahead. And then the paperwork never makes it between your BGA and the advisor or the advisor back to you. That That's a huge dilemma and it really uh, causes a lot of frustration for everyone involved in the process. Well, Leah really hit on, on, on a lot of it, but even more so when we're coming down to that nitty gritty and we need to get this in now, um, advisors would try to fax pieces of the signature. And it may not just be going to one or two people because we may have had maybe two trustees. So what this offers is it going out to everybody at the same time and you're getting clean signatures back. So, and a lot of times, you know, by the time we got the, the printed signatures, they were very, they were no longer clear. They were illegible. And now we had to get them over to you. Um, so this in that, in that way really helped. So e-delivery in that, that um, time saving um, and getting clear signatures made it much easier and, and faster to get to you. Thank you both. Uh, Leah, you'd mentioned the mail uh, process. Um, I haven't mailed anything in years. Uh, I'm assuming the cost of mailing has gone up over the years a, a little bit too. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. The cost that not the cost of the mailing, just the postage itself, overnighting things that are lost or delayed for some reason, and then just having to have staff like team members involved in that whole figuring out where to get the postage on those situations. It, it's very expensive for the BGAs. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, the only thing I mail is my voting ballot. So I mean, that's, and that's, that's already paid for. So that's uh, <laughs> all right. Great. Well, thank you for the insight on those uh, challenges um, that you guys had faced, you know, uh, we, well, you currently still face them in some regards um, as well, but um, kind of, you know, moving ahead here, you know, you know, before DocFast, you kind of mentioned this a little bit, you know, there are some operational inefficiencies. Um, you know, what what kind of operational inefficiencies like did your advisors have to deal with, your customers um, you know, have to deal it with? And, you know, were those issues um, you know, similar to like the longer cycle times and the NIGO and all that other stuff? Like what what are some of those that your agents and customers um, would have had to experience? I'll take this one, Leah, um, and then you can you can take it back. So uh, the inefficiencies that the advisors had is they got the, the paper policy and now they've got to mark it up. And, and because clients move fast, so do brokers. Um, they may have missed where they needed to sign. So they think they signed everywhere. They put the, the, the title there or maybe they missed it and now it's going in and now uh, something is missed and that we've got that NIGO. So now we got to go back and get that, that signature done or um, maybe a missing page altogether. So that's where I see the inefficiencies. With the e-delivery, the, the carrier is already marking it all up for you um, and it's putting them right where they need to be. Okay. For the manual process, you say marking it up. Is that like, here, I, I have highlighted this particular uh, section or I put those little tabs on the side. You to, got it. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, wow. so you, you needed somebody to take care of that over on either, either on the care on the VGA side, or if it was just sent directly to the, the advisor, then it's the advisor having to do that and making sure they're collecting everything that they need. Wow. Yeah. So if they miss something that's, that's time consuming. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Leah, what do you, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, first, I 100% agree with what Sally said, and I would just go a little deeper into the idea of like a missing page, like a missing amendment or something like that, like actual forms getting missed from the policy packets when we were in the paper-based or even though we still are a little bit in the paper-based environment, but that was a terrible experience for the advisor and for the policy owner, um, the insured, whoever needs to sign off on that, because it's not just you've gone through and waited to get the paperwork. You sign where you think you need to. It gets back to the carrier a week later, and then you find out, oh, it's not really complete because there was an amendment that didn't get inserted into this packet or something, like Sally said, one page was missing somewhere that didn't get signed off on. So entire critical policy form Forms are missing from the packets. And in an e-delivery space, now that can just be, you know, the 
a few seconds delay to get that information moved back to the advisor and then ultimately to the potential insured. Okay, great. So I'm, I'm hearing it so far we've, we, we hit on a couple of big things and it's time, right? Time is the, is the, it seems to be the common denominator here that, that I'm hearing. Is that, does that seem accurate? Yes. Time yeah. and experience, like the experience for the advisor and the client. I mean, I know Sally and I both care very much about how the clients experience this and that frustration and disappointment when they think something has been completed, just the impact to their experiences is, is significant. I would imagine you'd probably see some drop off, you know, if, if an agent has to come back to me as the consumer a second time because they weren't properly prepared or didn't give me all the right information up front that I could see where that could be frustrating as a consumer. It's like, I just talked to you. I, why am I doing this again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so, so now let's talk, you know, DocFast. Uh, you both have implemented DocFast. And so how did DocFast help you tackle those, those types of issues um, and challenges that you guys just talked about? Simplification. <laughs> Simplifying it all. Um, you get a link, you go into the, the, the policy to review it. So we're doing that initial review and it's a simple uh, drop down and you're e-delivering it to the, the um, advisor. So, and the advisor is able to go through it immediately. Um, and, and again, when they're done with the review and if they need to sign it, it takes them right into it and they send it off to their client. It is truly simplifying the process altogether. Yeah. Things are in good order. We've got that mm -hmm. kind of guarantee that it's going to everywhere that a signature or a date or an initial is needed, it is done. And we have access to those PDF packets so we can see when there's questions because there's all, not always, but almost always questions, something's going on and that access immediately to the data and the information is critical for a really good positive experience again for the clients. Yes. The other thing that it offers is that it offers an audit page. So we can see who has signed, when they signed, how often they've gone in. And it, it's very valuable um, in, in working with the advisor if they, they can't tell if something's going on. The advisor has actually access to that information too, but we do also as a BGA have that access. So one of the other things I just want to bring up to it, and, and it's not that it's used often, but it's there. Inside DocFast, the advisor and the, the BGA has the ability to um, not take it and offer a comment to say, I need this reissued in this way. Maybe it's a lower face amount. Maybe it's a um, a longer term period, but they are able to do that. And with that, the, the reissue comes much quicker. It's no longer us having to go back to new business, write an email, get a, get a, a response from that. And now we're waiting again. Right. So, so it works very nicely. Yeah, those are two great points, Sally. And I hadn't even thought about the audit page as I was considering all of the different reasons why this is a valuable system. What I would throw in is that um, from a BGA perspective, we're multi-carrier, like that's that's our world. Uh, the case managers on my teams work with potentially 20 different carriers in a day. So having a simple, again, back to that simplification, like those, uh, my case managers, they're talented and they're brilliant people, but that is a lot of different processes that they might have to be accountable for. So the streamline that they get and to know the experience is consistent. And when they're talking to the advisors to be able to explain it and be very consistent and advisors also sell with multiple carriers too. So again, bringing it all back to one experience that makes it good for the advisor and internally good for my team members too. 100% agree, Leah. <laughs> great, great points there, guys. Thank you so much. Um, so from, um, you know, so so you've adopted DocFast and, and so what type of measurables, what type of metrics can you share that, that your agency has, um, that's shown results like for their improvements? So across the board um, with the inclusion of DocFast in our process, we're at 95 to 97% of e, like e-delivery and e-processing for all of our policies that are eligible, which I think is huge and has really reduced the cycle time. You know, at least five business days, <clears throat> excuse me, off of permanent policies and more than that off of term policies. Wow, that's awesome. And yeah. time is money. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. 
No. So, Ali, how about you? Um, you know, I didn't get the whole metrics because this was a very quick uh, uh, call for me. So, but I'd say we're seeing about eight to 10 days off of our cycle time oh. um, for e-delivery. And, and I think that's really great. So I, I'll need to take a closer dive into it, but that's what we're seeing about eight to 10 days. Yeah, so I would imagine if if you guys are seeing those those reduction in time, your eight, your your advisors and agents are seeing that same type of thing. I mean, how much happier are they getting paid that much faster? <laughs> Very much so. They're yeah, definitely, I, and I can tell you anecdotally, it's not a, a hard number, but we by moving into a platform like DocFast. We get very few calls about these issues. Like before it was always, where's my policy? When is my policy going to arrive? Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our case managers and our case coordination team who help with the policy delivery process don't have to address that. So it allows them to focus on more critical questions. And again, the advisors are getting the cases placed more quickly and therefore getting their commissions more quickly as well. That's a great point. I didn't, uh, I mean, I'm, Sure, I thought of it at one point, but having the call volumes go down for you guys. I mean, we yep. we always think about the carrier and their call volumes going down. You know, I, I, the, obviously that impacts you guys uh, as well. So that's a great point to to bring out. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Between us and the carriers, because then we're the advisor would call us and we'd call the carrier and then we'd call the advisor. Yeah. So all of that has been reduced significantly. That's uh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, awesome. Thank you both for that. Um, we're going to move on here and we're just going to talk a little bit about, um, you know, adoption. And so from an adoption perspective, what type of challenges or if any, um, that, that did you guys, um, you know, encounter with that, whether, um, you know, whether it be, um, you know, staff or, or, or just even your agency as a whole technical reasons and things like that, you know, what challenges did you guys have? What, uh, you know, what have you done? What have you approached to, to overcome uh, those types of challenges? Okay. I'll start on this one, Leah. So for us, um, I, I think that the whole process, we're also used to registering for everything. So you, you get that registration in there and really it's, it's once you're in, it's very easy to follow along. But what we have done um, as a, as an agency is we, to help our advisors or our our staff to help the advisors as we have given them a um, just a little bit of a dialogue, a printout of what they can do to go through the process, which very it helps very much. So, um, the other thing I will do is I'm happy to get on any phone calls with our advisors to help them through it the first time, and usually that's about all it takes is getting them through that first time, and and they're on their way. That's great. I mean that's that's. That's the uh, the white glove service right there, right? Um, being right. able to just kind of walk them through and and uh, holding their hands that that whole way. So that's that's great that you guys do that. Um, Leah, how about you? Um, well, the good news is that we didn't get a ton of pushback in in the experience. But when we do, similar to what Sally said, our case coordination team, instead of calling carriers to ask where did the policy packet go, is it in the mail, they spend their time assisting advisors or office administrators in the advisor's office, understand the process and walking them through it and helping them understand once you know how to do it, it's very simple and you can do that. And then the only other area that sometimes we get a little bit of concern from advisors, but it's pretty um, straightforward to address is the idea of back in the day with a paper packet, you're in front of that person and having that conversation. You can still have the conversation. It's just a different experience with the digital experience versus a paper copy. So once we just reassure them and remind them you're still delivering this great insurance product to your customer, it, it's not any different. It's just the format is slightly different that we have had some emotional, you know, I will say transition for people, which change always brings emotion and transition. But once we get them there, it's like, this is our world now. A lot of us, you know, you do mortgages online and things like that. So we talk them through it and uh, most of the resistant fades very quickly. So sp speaking of resistance, um, you know, even, even staff, right. Your own internal staff, right. They're, you know, some people are resistant to change as well. Um, did you guys run into any problems about like training staff and, you know, I like the old process better. I've been in the industry, you know, 20 years, this is how we always done things. How is that? Uh, I mean, that's, a, that's, that's what people say. We've always done it this way. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, true. Uh, I pipeline says the same thing, right? We we always do it this way. Well, it doesn't mean it's right. Uh, 
but uh, what uh, any any f uh, feedback from that from a staff perspective? Any pushback? No, I'll start uh, just a comment quickly, and this kind of refers back uh, to my previous comments about the multiple carrier environment. My team loves it because they have to deal with all of these different processes and different underwriting procedures and requirement procedures at different carriers. So, so to have something more straightforward and simplified, again, in the consolidated experience, they appreciate it. They know where to go. They know how to get the answers. And once they understand how to use DocFast, they're up and running. Right. And I agree. So that once they've learned it, they love it. Um, and it's very easy to to work with and even to bring the advisors on board with it that they they can actually walk somebody through too. So that's that's the main thing. No having everybody being able to help that advisor or maybe even that client. Okay. So let's let's stay on the adoption theme here. So um, you know, now that um you know you're your agents have adopted it. Um, you know, what's their experience been like? What's what are they saying? What are you hearing from them about um, you know, the impact you know DocFast has had on them? But also, you know, keep in mind, you know, with the recent pandemic, like how did that impact them, you know, during that time as well? Uh, Leah, you want to start with that? Absolutely. Um, during the pandemic, they loved it. Um, because they wanted to keep doing business like we all wanted to keep doing business. And so to be able to seamlessly transition, I, as DBS has always been kind of e-first uh, platform for first, um, it was easy for us because we were already in that environment. But the advisors, kind of the stragglers and the people who had been resistant to change really appreciated being able to move into using DocFast and keep the process going and not worry about the health concerns of having to take that paper policy to their clients. And I think most of our advisors too recognize that the e-delivery, e-everything is the environment we're in and moving towards and will continue to move towards. And although they might begrudgingly accept it, they accept it and enjoy using the platform once they get on board. Okay. And it's, it's once they get on board, they they love it. So, but during the pandemic, pandemic this was an, a wonderful option for everybody. Um, and they enjoyed the whole e process from beginning to end. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine the the you know what everybody. I mean, we were home obviously during the pandemic. Um, you know, business had to continue. Um, you know, there's people that still needed protection. So having this, you know, be an online platform and allowing people to still uh, conduct business. Um, you know, when it's you know, typically a traditional face-to-face a -face type of a conversation, they're able to continue to do these things electronically and, you know, protect lives uh, still at the same time. I think it's tremendous, not just for, you know, us, uh, but just any any industry that had, you know, processes like this uh, in place during that time. I'm sure it was rough for everybody. Yeah. Um, we've touched a base on this a couple of times, but, um, you know, when it comes to the solutions, you know, there's, you know, there's the individual all in one type of a system, and then there's the multi carrier approach. Like, what's your thoughts on your preference there? Well, if I had it my way, <laughs> everybody would be um, in one platform, but it's not going to happen that way. Um, I would love to see it going that way because it would be easier on, on our advisors. Because as Leah and I mentioned before, it's streamlining the way they're doing business. Um, and when they work with so many different carriers, they do need to learn different processes for e-delivery. And so streamlining it to one would be wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Leah. And I think I've, I've throughout uh, my answers prior to this, I've made it fairly clear that I'm definitely in support of a single solution whenever possible. I do understand the needs of carriers and the nuances of their technology and wanting to have like the unique proprietary platforms. But for the advisor experience, as Sally said, for the end customer experience, having that single solution makes a big difference for us in the BGA space and for our advisor clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, better, better across the board experience. Absolutely. I'm sure like training manuals and things like that, that you guys probably have to put together, um, you know, having one, one type of, you know, set of ops, um, you know, versus having to support multiple. And I'm sure it's a, it's a burden on you guys from that. So thanks for your feedback on that. Um, 
you know, we, you know, as Doc Fast, you know, obviously as a multi-carrier, you know, we try to get as many, um, you know, carriers on the platform. So we're definitely in that, in that conversation with you. So um, appreciate the, the candid feedback on that. Um, so I have one more question for you guys. Um, and then Sally, I'll ask you to lead us off uh, on this, but what, you know, where do you see the, the future of e-delivery? Where is it heading in your opinion? In, in my opinion, um, e-delivery is going to be taking over the delivery process. So, um, and they, there won't be probably a paper policy unless the advisor is actually printing off that hundred page policy for their client. So um, I think it's, it's the way of our world, our business, um, and it's going to be e-delivery. Okay. Leah? I would echo that comment all day long. It is the way that's going. And the few few uh, products that are not available for the e process will be on it in the next year or two. I think anytime I talk to different carriers about it and ask like, why is product X still not available in this? And they're like, we're working on it, Leah. Trust me, we're working on it. And so <laughs> e-delivery and e across the line, it's the the way of the world. And it's definitely the way of our business. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like there's uh there's like new new innovations that are coming that um that would fit you know around e-delivery is like uh, obviously moving everything from paper to digital but even beyond that is there any any thoughts of like it'd be really neat if e-delivery went this route or offered this type of you know a piece to it or something like that is there any thoughts on that I don't think I have any big, amazing thoughts on that. I think more it's just as we see the transition of advisors being able and clients, the end client, being able to do things on their phones and having it all come as a very simple package where it's click, click, click and boom, 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 and you're done. Um, using technical terms, as you can tell here. <laughs> <laughs> But the idea that it is going to be all in one package, not I'm not talking just like a guaranteed issue where it goes or straight through processing, but where it's just more and more simplified, where signatures are reduced and it's easier for the clients to scroll through, the advisor to get there and make it just a faster, simpler process. Yes. Okay. Simple, a simple, more simplified solution. Okay. Like and, and being done on their phones because that that's... That's the computer these days. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people don't own phones anymore. They or I'm sorry, laptops anymore. They just do everything on their phone. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys uh very much for your feedback and your thoughts uh on this. Uh we are going to open this up for questions, but before uh from the audience um to either myself or you guys as well. Um, but really quick for those that uh those carriers that are on the call and you don't have an e-delivery solution or you've been, um, you know, not happy with the current one that you have, you know, just a little bit more about DocFast. Um, you know, we offer more than just policy delivery. We do all types of uh, documents. Uh, I don't really probably need to sell you on the benefits of it uh, when we're talking about cycle times and cost savings and things like that. You probably already done some uh, homework on that yourselves. But if you want to learn a little bit more about DocFast, you can scan the QR code. Uh, that's on the screen. Um, and, um, you know, you can get a little bit more from our website or set up, um, you know, a call with someone if you if you choose to. Um, so that being said, uh, I'll go ahead and kick it up to for any uh, Q&A that we might have before we um, we exit uh, here today. Yeah. So, Jared. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Leah. Thanks, Sally. Great, great conversations and really appreciate your your perspectives. Um, Dennis, a couple of, uh, well, this first one, Dennis, I'll toss over to you, uh, that, that came in, um, is what other applications uh, can DocFest integrate with to help accelerate cycle times? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, we do integrate uh, with payment providers. Um, so those that may be uh, ability to accept credit card payments um, through the process, uh, you know, this is from a carrier perspective. Um, you can uh, integrate with one of our payment providers or pick your own uh, payment provider uh, and then allow the credit card payment process to be included in your uh, consumer uh, experience. And that way you're collecting that uh, premium uh, real time um, and you're not having to wait for like bank draft and things like that later on. Uh, so we do various payment types of integrations. Um, we also... Uh, something that's new, uh, we're integrating in with uh, another vendor called Twilio. 
uh, to offer SMS uh, texting out to our consumers. That's coming soon. Uh, you'll probably see some uh, release notes coming out on that, but uh, we will be offering the uh, consumer experience to, so that the agent can say, oh, my, I'm going to send this to be a text to uh, my consumer. We just talked about how, uh, you know, everybody's on their phone now and not so much, um, you know, on, on their computers. Uh, so having that text, I know when I hear a text, I immediately look at it. If you send an email, I might look at it tomorrow, um, you know, type of a thing. So uh, having that uh, integration in with text is going to be, uh, you know, a big a big change here to reduce cycle times when it comes to the customer uh, response time. Great. Um, ne next question, and you know, I'll, I'll open this up for for everyone. But uh, can and maybe Dennis, you 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 kick it off here. But uh, can you walk folks through like a, a typical implementation time? What's involved? Um, you know, how that whole how that whole process uh, works, and and what we traditionally see from our end. Yeah, so there's two types of implementation. There's the carrier implementation and the BGA uh, implementation. The BGA implementation is fairly straightforward. Uh, we get you know a username set up for your agency um, as like a, a like your main admin uh, user. Uh, inside of there, uh, there is a um, uh, an admin where you can invite other users into the system so that your staff is now in there. Uh, and then it's just a matter of communicating with your carrier that hey, you're on DocFast. Um, we need you to start sending the policies through here. So from a BGA process, it's pretty, you know, there's no technical stuff that needs to be set up or anything like that uh, with them. It's just getting the, um, you know, the URL and a user set up and you're good to go. Um, from a carrier implementation, it's a little bit more uh, lengthy of a process. Uh, we've done them as, as uh, quick as 90 days. We could probably do them quicker. It just depends on the requirements. But, you know, we can do that. We usually do them around 90 days uh, as a quick one. But that's not a lot of the bells and whistles. So if you want some more of the bells and whistles, it might take a little bit longer, um, you know, for that. But, uh, um, you know, it, it does require, you know, you as a, as a carrier uh, to put some uh, IT uh, effort into it. And that's usually where some of the delays are. Uh, from the implementation, um, you know, you have to, uh, we have to work with you on an XML um, format and the data that's required in there. And then, um, you know, being able to send that information to DocFast, but also being able to receive it at the end of it. Setting up DocFast as a whole uh, is fairly straightforward. We could do that quickly. It's just more of that intake and outtake um, that we have to work with you uh, on is usually where a lot of the time um, factors are played. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, this next question I'll, I'll take, uh, someone's interested in learning more and, and to get a demo. So again, uh, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen, uh, fill out a short form. Uh, you can also go to ipipeline.com and learn more about, uh, about DocFast um, and, and fill out a, a, a short form there, or reply to the email that we're going to send uh, post-webinar with the recording of this session. So any anything that, that's uh, as easy and convenient for you if you want to uh, dive deeper and learn more about how this solution can help. Um, with that, if there are any other uh, questions, um, you know, that, that you guys have, feel free to uh, pop them in or uh, reach out and we're happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. So, um, yeah, I don't see any other questions that have, that have come through. So with that, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and wrap this up. Uh, Dennis, thank you. Uh, Leah and Sally, again, thank you for your insights and your perspectives. Um, really appreciate you guys uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to join us and uh, to share uh, the value of e-delivery from, from your standpoint. So thank you so much. Everyone else be on the lookout for a recording of this and uh, have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank, thank you, Leah. Thank you, Sally. Appreciate you. Welcome. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.